Hi everyone, it's Norm here. On today's episode, we're going to be trying to answer a pretty commonly question that I get asked, and that is, how can a commonly observed species be considered at risk? So stay tuned to learn a few different answers to this question. We have to remember that we do live in a very rare ecosystem, the tall grass prairie. So here in Manitoba, we only have about 1% of its former range left. So for some of these species, these areas are really the last strongholds for them. So for example, you may see uh, plants like Culver's root growing alongside road allowances or in ditches and think, well, if they're growing here in plain sight, then they must be growing elsewhere as well, which can be true. But in truth, these areas are some of these last strongholds. Our community is fortunate enough to have these strong ties uh, with nature that we notice things like this. And it's the history of our community that has a large impact in there being these remaining areas of tall grass prairie having to do with uh, the management of small scale uh, farming practices and uh, land management practices. So we pair this with current uh, protected areas and we are giving species at risk some area to be able to thrive in. For many of our species at risk, the tall grass prairie natural area is the very limit of their population range. So some species global population might be higher but the local population we have here in Manitoba is lower. So a species at risk like uh, least bittern or red-headed woodpecker, uh, this is their most northerly range. So elsewhere in uh, the states for example they can have a more solid population whereas uh, here the population is quite small. So uh, not just north and south, but east and west as well for uh, species like the prairie population of the eastern tiger salamander, we are at the edge of their population as well. Now this uh, edge of the population range is a lot of times the, the first one to disappear, meaning our area is of most importance to uh, try to uh, conserve. Tall grass prairie is uh, a very diverse area and that's why we sometimes use the word the natural area because it doesn't just include the classic prairie landscape but it includes uh, deciduous forests, uh, coniferous forests, wetlands like uh, streams, rivers, swamps and if we even expand on that the, the broader view from the tall grass prairie we have a few other ecoregions and wildlife tends not to stay in one point but they'll cross all over the place so it means that a lot of wildlife coming and going is uh, quite varied and actually can be a little more rare than you think all of the different species we have in manitoba about 25 percent of them are considered provincially rare If you were to search the total population for some of our species at risk, you might be surprised that they actually can number in the millions. Barn swallow are a good example of this. They're species that folks commonly point out to me and say, well, we see these quite regularly. And uh, the Canadian population is approximately 5 million. Well, we have to consider declines in population as well and that's a big factor into considering when they're at risk. Since the 1970s 
barn swallow populations have dropped by about 75%. So that is a real cause for concern. We do want to continue uh, future generations to be able to say that barn swallows are commonly seen in, in the farmyard and, and so on. Uh, other populations can be on the list that are somewhat high, but they appear sort of densely. So the maple leaf mussel is a good example of this. It only is found in a few waterways in Manitoba. And if a natural event was to happen or a, a spill of some sort, and it could potentially wipe out that whole big population. Another example would be a monarch butterfly where they overwinter almost the entire population in central Mexico. Well, one event of some sort could go through there and really decimate the population. When we ask that question, how can this species be at risk when I see it all the time? We have to remember that it's a bit of a privileged question. We're lucky to be living in and around the tall grass prairie natural area that does provide some of the last suitable habitat for some of these species. In the future, I hope to hear people talk about these species at risk and maybe we'll more commonly see them. So hopefully this answers some of the question as to why uh, these species can sometimes be seen more regularly than you would think for an at-risk species. If you have any more questions or comments, please contact me and we'll see you on the next episode.